Hey, so this is Lee at Vision Eternity Ministries, and we are talking about what Jesus said to me the other day. I was out walking, and he said, and then the end will come. When the gospel is preached, not the compromise gospel that we live in, but the truth. Let's acknowledge him. Jesus, I thank you and praise you for telling us the truth, for, for convicting us correcting us, showing us the truth, how to be ready to stand before you that day, how to be that bride without spot or wrinkle, truly how to care about you and have compassion for you and your heart's desire. We love you and praise you. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. And so that was, that's what happened. I was out walking the other night, and he said, Matthew 24, 14, when the gospel of good news is preached, then the end will come. He kept telling me he was coming, and I'm like, okay, so when? Then he kept saying soon. I'm like, okay, well, I don't understand soon, because when he first made it really real to me, I thought he was coming the next day. And so now he's saying where we're at. He's helping us to have understanding as to where we're actually at. You know, Matthew 24 breaks down the things that are going to happen before he comes. And for him to just say that, to say that the gospel has to be preached, to tell us that is what he's working on, that's what he's trying to get us to do, is to do that, to do that work. He said, Whoever believes in me, We'll do what I was doing, and even more. And we're not doing it. We have all these excuses. And really today, he's saying it's because we're ashamed. The enemy has us so downtrodden that we believe the lies that are spoken to us. You're not good enough. Um, you didn't go to school. And even the false prophets, he wants to say that they're telling the, the, the people that are, are just beginning to know Jesus, that they can't. You have to go to school. You have to do this. You have to do that. And Jesus isn't saying that. He said, if you believe, you're going to do what I was doing and even more. He didn't say, if you go to school. He didn't tell the fishermen they had to go to school. In fact, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, they are the ones that studied but the thing is, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. They didn't have the truth. And that's what happens. When we listen to the religious leaders, they're just telling you what the Word says. But they're not practicing the Word. They don't have the presence of Jesus with them. And so how can they tell the truth? Nicodemus asked Jesus, wow, you can really see that you're from God. And he even went away in the night to talk to Jesus. Because religion is such a mess. Religion is just practicing the same thing over and over. And he was afraid, apparently, if you read between the lines of what they thought. His friends thought of him, that he had to go visit Jesus in the night. But he saw something different. And that's what the people have to see in us, something different. We're not like the the church body that is really in it just for the money or recognition even. And so the gospel, the truth, the unwatered down compromised truth has to be told. And that truth really will get in your face. It'll help you to understand that you're faking it. And so we have to be bold in what Jesus is saying. You know, we get excited, we get on fire, we go to church, and they put our fire out with their rules and regulations. And Jesus is saying today, you're going to be persecuted because I was. And you, you need to be ready to endure that persecution for the word's sake. You can't be his disciple 
unless you're ready to lay it down. He said to me that we've been convicted of this message and not liking many, he said, many have been convicted of this message and they didn't like it. It's uncomfortable. I have to go do that work. What am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? What am I going to wear? And he even said that he would provide your needs. He told us, 70, don't take anything with you. I'm going to take care of you. We don't want to lay down the things of this world for him. We're hanging on to it. And so he said, those of you that have been convicted, you went to your pastor and your friend, or your friend or, or someone, to feel better about not doing it. And they told you what you wanted to hear. But he said, he said that you need to go to him. You must look to him, not them. And then he even said, you should desire to be convicted, to be taught, to be trained. When that message convicts you, don't go find someone to, to pet you, so to say, and say, it's okay, you don't need to do that. Besides, you haven't gone to school, you really don't know anything. Because Jesus in you is the one that's going to do the work. They don't know. And they're living religiously. They're living by just what they see. They're living by what they sense. They're not living by faith. They're compromising the word. So remember, Jesus said, don't let anyone deceive you. Don't look to anyone. He said on that day that if you follow after a person, the one that's deceiving you, the one that's telling you the lies that you want to hear, not only will their judgment not be good, but neither will yours. Jesus said that not everyone who calls him Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those who do his will. And it's his will that you do his work. He said, if you believe in me, you'll do what I was doing and even greater things. And so whatever the reason, you don't, you don't like the feeling of being rejected. You, you want to get out of this, so, so you go try to find someone to agree with you. Jesus is going to have to say, I didn't know you. He's going to say, he's going to say away from me, I didn't know you. You're practicing lawlessness. You're not going to be able to say, well, my pastor said so. Your relationship with Jesus should be personal, and you should go to him. And so your judgment will be the same as that one that deceives you. And, you know, you're not going to stand before talking about when you do his work and the, and the rejection that you're afraid you're going to get and the people that look down on you and um, Jesus... Jesus is saying he knows how that feels. That's how he felt. You know, even though he knew he was the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and they didn't know what he knew, even though that was taking place, they were looking down at him, spitting at him, mocking him, and he just let them. And he wants you to do what he was doing. Let them spit at you, mock you, look down at you, because you're giving them a chance for eternal life if you tell them. And so go ahead and desire that persecution. Desire that love that Jesus has to give. Decide. Okay, I know they're going to look down on me. They don't understand. But Jesus wants the truth to be known to everyone. And if we're shy and timid and we're afraid of what they think of us and we walk away because of that, they're not going to know. He said, we're the holdup. 
And um, I just want to exactly read it to you. To let you know that you do qualify, I assure you, I solemnly tell you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he himself will be able to do things I do, and he will do even greater things than these, because I go to my Father. And now he's going, just like he said in Matthew um, 25, he's going on this long journey. He's assigned us to do his work, and he's going to come back and judge us for that. So you don't want to get out of it. Don't try to get out of it. Because if you do, you're not doing as well. And it, it says you're going to be thrown out into the outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, if your pastor's not telling you that, or he's not telling you the truth when you go to him, leave. Go to Jesus. You want to know the truth. So in Second Timothy 7, Paul says, God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craving and cringing and fawning fear, Amplified Classic Bible, but he has given us a spirit of power and love and a calm, well-balanced mind, disciplined and self-controlled. Do not blush or be ashamed then to testify to and for our Lord of me a prisoner for his sake, but with me, take your share of the suffering to which the preaching of the gospel may expose you and do it in the power of God. That's what Jesus is saying today. Don't be ashamed of me, or I'll be ashamed of you. Don't care what they think. Don't care what they think, but care what he thinks. He's the one you're going to stand before that day. And... He's looking for that person that loves him enough that will just go ahead and take that shame that is given out by people that don't understand. As the Pharisees treated Jesus, you got to expect to be treated that way. They hated him first. And because of him, they're going to hate you. And it doesn't feel good. It's not nice, it's not sweet. And another thing to remember is our warfare is not against flesh and blood, but it's the enemy, spiritual darkness. He is trying to get you to quit. And if you quit, you're doomed. If you quit, you will live in eternal damnation. Either you love Jesus or you don't. And so, like he said, desire to be convicted. Desire it. In uh, Revelation 3.19, he said, I correct those I love. And so, he's saying, desire that correction, that conviction. Let him teach you. Let him correct you. Let him train you up and send you out. You're going to leave here anyway. You can't take your stuff with you. You can't, you can't live with him forever with your stuff. As he said to the rich man, get rid of it. It's in your way. It's keeping you from eternal life. Your stuff is keeping you from doing the work of Jesus. It's keeping you from eternal life. He said to the man, sell all your stuff and follow me. And the man was grieved and he walked away. Are you going to be grieved and walk away from Jesus and for, forfeit your eternal life? He's asking us to prepare the way for him. The end's not going to come until everybody knows the truth. And the, the fewer of us that are telling the truth, the longer it's going to take. And meanwhile, there's needless suffering going on. I know that it's not as well that even one should perish. So we're to go after the lost sheep. The harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. The workers are distracted. The workers are afraid of persecution. That's the word he wants to tell you today. Don't be afraid of the persecution, but endure it. 
That is love. To be persecuted for Jesus is love. You're loving them anyway. Remember what he said? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He's going to grow, up, grow you up to that place where you're going to say, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And so Jesus is saying, will you go for me? Will you do my work? Will you do it perfectly and upright? Will you tell the truth? Will you get rid of the lukewarm life that you're living and walk in boldness? Show the difference between me and religion? Everybody thinks they're going to heaven and they're not. That's false. That's false doctrine. That's a false prophet that's teaching that. Don't follow that because on that day he's going to say, I didn't know you. And you're going to be carried off. And you're going to be, you're going to live forever where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's what the Bible says. And so, desire, Jesus said. I wrote this down. You must desire to be convicted, taught, trained. In the truth, do not follow a false, false prophet. If you do, your judgment will be the same as theirs. Don't go looking for where it makes you feel better. Your flesh needs to be trained. Your flesh is your enemy. You have to walk after the dictates of the spirit, not your flesh. Don't give in to your flesh. So if you never asked Jesus to come live on the inside of you, then I want to pray that with you today. Ask him. It's not just a prayer that you pray and you automatically go to heaven and you don't have to do anything. You do. You have to do something. You have to be a part of his life. If you love him, then you're going to be a part of his life. You're going to care about what he cares about. Just like you care about your children, what they care about. What's important to them is important to you. What's important to him will be important to you. And how you fall in love with him is just by getting to know him. And when he corrects you, then you actually know what he's thinking. And know what's important to him. Know what, know exactly what pleases him. Because if he corrects you, if he says don't do that, that doesn't please him. And he's going to train you to go for him. He's preparing you to live with him. If you can't let go of it now, how are you going to let go of it then? He's asking us to let go of the things of this world and prepare to move in with him. Do his work. If you're willing to do his work, then he's going to empower you to do it. He's going to empower you to withstand the persecution, not care what people think of you. You know something they don't know. And he just loves them, and he wants them to have a chance. And so don't let that intimidate you. And don't listen to the enemy tell you not to tell people because everybody's going to know, and, and, you know, you're going to be cut off from that group. Praise the Lord. Get cut off from that group then. If people don't like you because you love Jesus, it's okay. You're going to stand before him, not them. So let's acknowledge him, Jesus. We thank you and praise you for telling us the truth, confronting us, convicting us, correcting us. We desire it. We want it. We want to know the truth. We desire you, Lord, and only you. Help us to let go of those things that are in our way. Come, live on the inside of us. We commit to you. We're engaged to you, Lord, and we will not date anyone else. Help us, though. Help us keep our commitment. Help us to be faithful. Show us who you are. Help us to want what you want. Love you and praise you. Give you all the glory. 
So that's exactly it. You know, what you're saying is, I want to be engaged to you. No one, nothing comes before you. I want to do your work. I want to be a part of your return. I want to hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You did my work. Your life wasn't about you, but it was about me, what I cared about. Your neighbor. Anyone around you is your neighbor, right? And he wants them to know what you know. Don't keep it to yourself. Because he's going to say, I didn't know you. You didn't do my work. You were ashamed of me. You didn't want to give up that TV show to go minister to someone. It's all about you and your flesh. That's not what heaven is about. The kingdom of heaven is about love. Moving into heaven is loving, putting others first, not yourself. Okay, so if you said that prayer, I'd be so excited to know. And um, John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word is God. And so when you look at John 1.1, 1, 1, you're looking at Jesus. You're looking at who he is. And he said, if you love me, you'll obey me, and I'll manifest myself to you. He's going to manifest himself in you. If you obey him, you're giving him permission to train you up, to get you ready, to move in with him, to send you out, to take care of all of your needs. But if you don't obey him, then he said in Revelation 3.20, he's knocking at the door of your heart. If you heed his voice, he's going to move in. But if you don't, he's not, right? If you heed his voice, I'm going to come and live on the inside of you. So the opposite is true. If you do not heed his voice, it's not going to live on the inside of you. So you can't say that prayer and then just sit around and do what you want. You can't compromise. You can't be lukewarm, but you'll be digging in the Word and getting hungry for Jesus. Get hungry for him and do as well. Care about what he cares about. I don't care what someone else thinks. I just care what he thinks. Thank you so much for listening today.